Emergency lights are going off, sirens blaring, the spaceship is shaking like crazy. The cosmic darkness beyond the portholes is illuminated by pulsating flashes. The astronauts are strapping themselves in and looking at the screens, cold sweat breaking on their foreheads. Straight ahead, space is cut in half by a blinding beam. Nothing in the universe can stop it. It looks like a humongous airplane jet stream, millions of times more powerful than any jet could make. There's no way to go around it. The leader of the space expedition orders everyone to turn around immediately. That was a black hole jet, a real monster of space. The holes, like huge vacuum cleaners, swallow everything that falls beyond their event horizon, the boundary between space-time and the place where it disappears. If you find yourself close to this border, you're doomed. Even light can't escape the gravity of a black hole, and it's the fastest thing in the universe. The holes not only absorb matter, but also shoot jets into space, mysterious beams thousands of light years long. There are no black monsters near the Earth, but let's imagine if one suddenly popped up close to the sun. The hole immediately starts devouring the star. Strong gravity pulls one side of the sun more than the other. The hole tears the sun into ribbons, eating it just as you would eat spaghetti off your plate. Physicists call this phenomenon spaghettification. When the monsters finished its meal, it hiccups, and, like laser swords, two jets cut our galaxy in half. Astronomers are observing a similar catastrophe right now, billions of light years away from us. A black hole from the 3C321 system is bombarding a nearby galaxy with a jet of X-rays, gamma rays, and electrons accelerated to the speed of light. The onslaught has been going on for a million years, and we're lucky it's taking place at a safe distance. If a jet comes close to a planet similar to Earth, it'll vaporize the atmosphere and the ozone layer. All life on the surface will disappear. Only deep underground dwellers will survive. If a black hole does appear next to the sun, though, we won't live long enough to see the jet. The monster will absorb the energy of the star, and we'll simply lose all heat and light. The Earth will cool down, delving into eternal darkness. But, like anything else, jets can do good things too. Like fertilizers helping crops to grow, the energy of the rays squeeze the space clouds, and new stars will be born from them. Imagine a drain in the bathroom through which water flows into a pipe. The water moves in a spiral, and some of it rotates around the hole. Now imagine that the black hole is the same drain, and instead of water, there's the stuff called plasma. It spins rapidly, gets magnetized, and collects into a huge accretion disk. Plasma starts to glow, and at some point, shoots two streams into space. The black hole V404 Cygni lies 8,000 light years away. It's like a firework display that weighs as much as 10 suns. The problem is, they forgot to install it securely, and the wick was prematurely set on fire. The hole is powered by gas from a nearby star. It provides infinite charges for the space fireworks. The V404 Cygni jets don't just fire from the poles, but in every direction. A disk as wide as seven suns is spinning around the black hole. The inside of the disk is wobbling like a top that's about to stop spinning and fall. Scientists believe the wobbles and random shots are caused by distortions of the space-time continuum. Black holes are not the only ones who know how to put on a space show. Their main competitors are gamma-ray bursts. Science doesn't know exactly how they appear. Most likely, it's because of the decay of a huge star or the collision of neutron stars. Satellites record one gamma-ray burst every day, but at least 500 outbreaks occur in the universe within the same time period. An amateur astronomer first seeing the observable universe may feel like a movie star on the red carpet. 
Only, they'll be blinded not by the lights from the cameras of journalists and fans, but by constant gamma-ray bursts. If there is a flash near the Earth, our planet will feel like a candle in a snowstorm. Imagine that you live in the future and can take off on safe interstellar flights. On your spaceship, you fly to a planet that looks like Earth to see a gamma-ray burst with your own eyes. Your ship is cutting into outer space and landing on the planet in question. As soon as you step on its soil, though, you feel it. Every living thing in this world is waiting for something terrible to happen. Frightened birds are flying through the sky. Animals start running out of the forests and looking for shelter. The wind makes the leaves rustle, and it's like they're whispering to you, save yourself, get out of here. Then, the wind grows stronger and turns into a storm. A bright flash appears on the horizon. After a few seconds, the light intensifies. Someone huge has turned on space floodlights. Everything is lost, there is only light. As much energy is released in one second as our sun generates in 10 billion years. 10 seconds pass and the show is over. The planet is moving through space and the flash has only hit a part of its southern hemisphere. But that's enough for things to go badly. The gamma ray burst was a pretty short one, so it probably wouldn't have vaporized the oceans or blown away the atmosphere. But the ozone layer, which protects the planet from the rays of the nearest star and cosmic radiation, still disappears. All life in this world abruptly ends. The picture is terrible, but there's no need for us to panic just yet. Scientists believe the probability of a similar catastrophe on our planet is zero. But the Earth hasn't always been so lucky. The Ordovician extinction occurred 450 million years ago. Perhaps a gamma ray burst was to blame. Its epicenter was 6,000 light years away from Earth. Harmful UV light hit the planet's surface, reducing the ozone layer by 40%. More than half the plants and animals disappeared. But life continued to develop, and after 200 million years, dinosaurs began roaming the planet. Eta Carina is a hypergiant double star. It's almost 200 times heavier than the sun, and in 10 seconds, it emits as much light as the sun in a year. It's as far as 7,500 light years away from Earth. But in 1843, dwellers of our planet saw it in the night sky without telescopes. This was possible thanks to an explosion. These beautiful clouds of gas and dust are the consequences of those events. We can say these are huge ruins of a star, but they look cool. Over the next one million years, Eta Carina will continue exploding and form a gamma ray burst. But even here, humanity needn't worry. The direction of the gas clouds indicates that the future burst beams won't hit the Earth. Our planet is under siege. Right now, 30 million space objects, varying in size from a grain of sand to a car, are flying towards the Earth. But our atmosphere burns all border violators. Scientists are constantly monitoring space, and they haven't found a single space rock potentially hazardous for humanity. But this doesn't mean it doesn't exist. A huge asteroid arrives to Earth once every two million years, on average. Here are the surfaces of the Moon, Mars, and Mercury. Craters cover them like cheese holes. These are the tracks of asteroids that have been bombarding their surface for millions of years. An atmosphere is an excellent barrier against the rock shower from the skies. But every year, around 500 large objects still make their way through it. Most of them fall into the ocean or sparsely populated areas and remain unknown. Geological activity continues on the planet. The continents move, mountains rise and fall. As you watch this video, the landscape of the Earth is changing. 
All of this erases all traces of meteorites that have fallen on the planet. Imagine a giant star, a space object with ginormous mass, collapsing down into gravitational singularity. This is a region of space where the density of matter becomes infinite. In such areas, the standard concepts of space and time don't have any meaning anymore. No wonder such objects have captured our imagination. These days, we even have a few photos of black holes, or rather, the space around them. The first photo of a black hole's event horizon was taken in 2019. The event horizon is a point of no return on the outskirts of a black hole. When something, for example, matter, radiation, or light reaches this boundary, there is no way for it to escape. We can use the event horizon to estimate the size of the black hole. The larger it is, the more massive the black hole you've come across is. An international team of scientists that consisted of more than 200 astronomers had been working for years to get this result, and eventually their efforts paid off. The black hole, the region around which they managed to capture, is about 55 light years away from Earth at the center of the galaxy M87. People saw this amazing image thanks to the work of a vast global network of telescopes called the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration or simply EHT. Scientists created a virtual telescope that turned out as big as our planet by combining the power of eight radio telescopes. But it was tricky. The researchers had to simultaneously point the telescopes in a meticulously planned order with the help of precise atomic clocks set on each telescope. But even though now we kind of know what a black hole looks like from the outside, we haven't figured out what might be waiting for us on the other side. Many people imagine black holes as bizarre portals to other worlds, dimensions, or parallel universes. We'll get back to these theories a bit later. So, why not jump into a black hole and go all the way to the other side? Unfortunately, such an escapade is bound to end tragically. If something gets close to a black hole, there's no escape. You might argue that you don't need to go back. After all, you want to explore what's ahead. True, but there's another problem. The force of gravity around a black hole increases dramatically the closer you come. It even creates the effect of spaghettification, when an object gets stretched into thin strands of space pasta due to the effects of gravity. When spaghettified, the matter then gets pulled into the black hole's orbit and flattened into a swirling and glowing disk of material. And eventually, this matter settles into a nice orbit around the black hole, quite far away from the point of no return. And that's not how you want your space adventure to end. Well, I don't. Getting something to cross the event horizon isn't as easy as it may seem. The material needs to be pushed out of its stable orbit around the black hole. In other words, something must make it fall in just like it happens with the Sun and Earth. Despite the star's enormous gravity, our planet doesn't get pulled towards it, right? One of the few reasons why the material might cross the event horizon is collisions between particles. By crashing into one another, they gain some energy, and that's enough to send them spiraling into a black hole. An object entering a black hole is instantly transformed. From the outside, it would seem as if the object starts moving more slowly because time distorts near the event horizon of a black hole. From the perspective of the object falling into the space monster, it would take an infinite amount of time for it to become a part of the black hole. When it happens, its mass will be added to that of the black hole. But even if you somehow manage to survive entering a black hole, you wouldn't be able to come out on the other side. Now, I might disappoint you right now, but black holes don't go anywhere. There aren't any holes involved. And these space phenomena aren't even black. Or at least that sort of black. Black holes might seem inky because even light can't escape their clutches. But this has nothing to do with their color. Anyway, when you cross a black hole's event horizon, all paths lead to the singularity even if we talk about a photon of light moving directly away from it. But the main problem here is that singularities are mathematically impossible. 
That's why some scientists suggest that when all this weird stuff happens inside the black hole, its mass gets linked to the expansion of the entire universe. And such a black hole is like a rubber band, stretching along with the universe as it expands. And as it stretches, its energy increases. And since mass and energy are proportional, the mass of the black hole increases too. But this new mass creates a pressure that makes the universe expand even more. That's the reason the universe is expanding faster and faster all the time. Wow, that sounds insane. Then, there's also a theory about parallel universes. And this multiverse theory takes it all one step further. Those who believe in it state that there might be countless realities. According to this theory, we live in a bubble that is just one of many other bubbles. And these bubbles constantly pop up and vanish. And guess what? Right, black holes might be tunnels between these universes. Or rather, not tunnels, but wormholes. This idea that black holes could be wormholes leading to other galaxies or universes has been around for some time. It gained some fresh ground in the 1980s when a discussion started about whether an object could physically travel through such a tunnel. But since there's no firm evidence that a black hole can allow for such a passage, this remains just an idea. But if black holes lead to other galaxies or other universes, there must be something opposite to them on the other side. That's where the concept of white holes comes into play. So far, white holes are only a theory. You can imagine them as black holes in reverse, or as a ball that falls to the ground and then bounces up again. In other words, everything that falls in bounces and comes out through the white hole. But how might white holes form? One of the theories speculates that a white hole might be a black hole that has almost collapsed in on itself and then exploded outward again. What if, inside a black hole, there's a long tube that keeps getting longer and narrower until it reaches the point in which it gets so narrow that quantum effects make it bounce back? And then, the super long and super narrow tube is getting thicker and wider again. And we've got a white hole on our hands. But then, what could make a black hole want to turn itself inside out? According to quantum mechanics, Many things we perceive as continuous are granular. Even light is not a continuous wave, it's made up of photons. So if we apply quantum mechanics to space itself, we'll find out that the cosmos is granular too. It means a black hole can't squeeze stuff down to infinity. At some point, it will reach its minimum size. And this matter, or whatever is falling down the black hole, will have to stop and bounce back giving birth to a white hole. What matter would such a white hole spit out? Some experts think it could be ordinary electromagnetic radiation. It would be unrecognizable from what originally fell into the black hole, since things get horrendously squashed after entering black holes. And while black holes have an event horizon, white holes would have a reversed event horizon. It would prevent anything from entering a white hole. And because of this feature of white holes, if you decided to travel to one, you wouldn't be able to even get close to it. Space. Dark, lifeless, and quiet, right? Well, apparently, it's not always true. Recently, scientists have detected an eerie echo coming from the main black hole in our galaxy. It has high and low notes and sounds pretty otherworldly. What does it mean? Should we sound the alarm bell, siren, whatever? Sagittarius A star is our own supermassive black hole, sitting right in the center of the Milky Way galaxy where we live. You might know that black holes are the true monsters of our universe, gobbling up everything that is careless enough to come too close. If a massive black star runs out of its star fuel, it sometimes becomes super dense and buckles under its own weight collapsing inward and bringing space-time along. As a result, the gravitational field of this new thing becomes so strong that nothing can escape it, not even light. And so goes a black hole. We really can't see black holes since they devour everything, even light. But we can still figure out where they're located, all thanks to the existence of accretion disks. Want an explanation? Well, picture a black hole. 
The starving thing consumes all the matter that strays too close, squeezing it into a superheated disk of glowing gas. The black hole also bends light around it, which creates a circular shadow. That's what I mean. We can't see a black hole itself, but we can see the accretion disk surrounding it. It happens like this. First, the material gets caught in the black hole's orbit and squeezed into a razor-thin spinning band. Friction, heat, electric, and magnetic forces energize this disk, which makes the material glow intensely. The most massive black holes have such bright bands that they can outshine millions of galaxies. Inside this disk of glowing material, particles rub against one another. It slows them down and sends them straight toward the black hole's event horizon. If this friction didn't exist, the material would be orbiting the black hole for billions of years, like planets circling around their stars. Now, let's get back to Sagittarius A star. It's far less luminous than other black holes at the center of galaxies astronomers have observed. It means that, at the moment, our central black hole isn't actively munching on the matter surrounding it. What, is it catching some Zs? The answer is unclear. There's new evidence received by NASA's IXP telescope. It suggests that the seemingly sleeping giant woke up pretty recently, about 200 years ago. Ooh, that is recent. It snacked on gas and all kinds of cosmic debris within its reach. Why did it happen? And what did the black hole do after that? Sagittarius A star is the nearest to a supermassive black hole, just 25,000 light years away from Earth. Its estimated mass is millions of times greater than that of our Sun. It sounds impressive, doesn't it? So, when scientists spotted relatively recent X-ray emissions of ginormous clouds of gas in the vicinity of the black hole, they immediately called on the IXP telescope to figure out what it may mean. What intrigued them most was how bright these clouds were. You see, most cosmic clouds, called molecular clouds, are dark and cold, with their X-ray signatures very faint. But that wasn't the case with this finding. Of course, there are a few theories concerning this phenomenon. One of the main explanations for why these giant molecular clouds are shining so bright is that they just echo a long-gone flash of X-ray light. It could mean that our supermassive black hole might not have been that dormant some centuries ago. After additional research, astronomers figured out that the X-rays coming from the giant molecular clouds were actually reflected light. And this light must have come from a short-lived and extremely intense flare that was produced either very near or right at Sagittarius A star. And the most likely cause of it is the black hole suddenly consuming a huge chunk of the material surrounding it. It happened around the start of the 19th century. It was most likely a sight to behold. Whirlpools of particles were drawn toward the black hole's event horizon, also known as the point of no return. The black hole started to ingest all this material, which resulted in brilliant bursts of X-ray light and echoes that we managed to translate into sound waves here on Earth. This discovery is crucial for understanding the processes happening to and around our supermassive black hole. We might also figure out what physical processes can potentially awake Sagittarius A star again, even if this period of activity is just temporary. Supermassive black holes are the largest among all black holes out there. Their mass can be hundreds of thousands or even millions to billions of times the mass of our Sun. And two such giants have been recently spotted with the help of the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array of Telescopes, mercifully also known as ALMA. Two gigantic black holes were growing alongside each other not far from the center of the coalescing galaxy. Apparently, these black holes came across each other when their host galaxies collided. One of the black holes is around 200 million times the mass of our Sun, and the other is a bit smaller, about 125 million times the mass of our star. They aren't visible directly, but are surrounded by bright clusters of warm glowing gas and stars tucked close by the black hole's gravitational pull. Time will pass, and these black holes will start circling each other. And eventually, they will collide, creating one, probably even bigger, black hole. Interestingly, such immense merges are more typical for distant galaxies. This makes it harder for Earth-based telescopes to see them. 
But the sensitivity of ALMA helped astronomers observe these bright and compact regions where matter swirls around black holes. Imagine how surprised they were when, instead of one black hole, they saw two of them munching on the dust and gas stirred up by the massive space merger. And if before, experts thought that such galaxy mergers didn't really happen in our neighborhood, this discovery may mean that black hole binaries like this one may be much more common than we previously thought. And if pairs of black holes are so common, it can make it easier for us to study gravitational waves. These waves, also known as ripples in space-time, occur when black holes collide. If we talk about the recently discovered pair of black holes, it might still take them several hundred million years to crash into each other. But by observing their behavior, scientists can figure out how many binary black holes that are about to collide there are in the universe. Also, this may give us more insight into what is going to happen when our home Milky Way galaxy collides with the Andromeda galaxy in about 4.5 billion years. Oh, I can't wait. Now, have you heard that we might be living in a black hole? No, I'm not kidding. Such a scary theory does exist. See for yourself, black holes pull inside everything they see. But what if one black hole has already engulfed us long ago? Surprisingly, some physicists deem this theory somewhat plausible. For example, Dr. Nikodem Poplovsky, a theoretical physicist from Indiana University, states that everything that a black hole swallows may turn into a new universe inside the hole or on the other side of it. Who knows? Maybe our universe used to be a quite different place until it got pulled into a black hole. The theory of white holes is closely connected with the previous idea. While black holes swallow all the matter so that not even light can escape, white holes are something quite the opposite. These formations are believed to spit out everything that black holes have pulled in. In other words, a white hole is the hypothetical area of space-time that nothing can enter from the outside, but light and matter can escape from it. As for a black hole, on the contrary, you can only enter it from the outside but can't get free afterward.